core problem is our ability to create information has far exceeded our ability to manage it. We're kind of like we're drowning in our richness. That's kind of what's happening. Because you have all this data, all these access points, and there's really no way to help you really deal with it, except for stuff you can pull into your human brain. And you only pull in so much. So you've got this massive amount of potential, but there's not any real tools to, to harness it. We have so much stuff that we have to deal with, individually, as a culture. So much, that it just bursts the bounds of any physical library. You know, if we had a Dewey Decimal System for everything on the web, the trillion pages and all of the sub-pages on it, we wouldn't find a thing. That system simply can't work. The amount of media that's available to the average user is a, is a vastly much larger superset than anything that's ever existed in human history. Uh, if I was going to start a news business tomorrow, I would start a news business designed to produce not one new bit of news, but instead to aggregate news for individuals in ways that matter to them. Google really was more important as the web was in millions of pages. Now we're entering a, way, a web that's going to be billions, well it already is, but it's going to be billions and billions of pages and soon trillions of pages because a tweet is actually, every individual item is a page. Every product in the world, the whole world, everything you can name or address is going to have a page. And so that's trillions of things. And Google doesn't scale to that. There should be enough information out there that you should be able to ask for something extraordinarily specific, but you can't. You pretty much have to do all the integration in your own head. You've got to come back and see all the stuff that comes back from Google. Say, oh, I wonder how I could ask that because this was kind of right, but this was wrong. And, oh, I see why it came back, came this out. That, that isn't what I want, though. And so that's not really a, a search. I think people use the word search to mean this sort of parachuting in, crossing your fingers, and hoping to land somewhere really good. You know, when you're looking for a camera and you go to some place, there's like 10,000 cameras, and you're overwhelmed. And sort of studies show that people actually are less likely to buy something when they're overwhelmed by these things, and less likely to actually be happy with what they buy afterwards. We have too many uh, emails, so we start to tag them or label them. Gmail calls them labels, and we start to apply labels. And then we get, maybe, we start to get hundreds of labels, and we think, oh, geez, now I've got to label my labels. All the tweets and all of my space, and you can start to say, what if I could start to put things together in all that, in that flow of information? Um, and in order to do that, you need some structure. It's clear that something needs to be done with, with more structured data. It's like all the information might be out there, it's just if it's indexed in a really inaccessible form, you know, a lot of times it might as well not be out there, right? That is, that is in many ways the problem of the edge, right? Content, as it turns out, is not king. We are always going to be filtering the fil filters that filter our filters, that filter our filters. How do I find the right file? How do I know that all those files belong there? How do you integrate data? Uh, how do I keep up with, with all of these uh, new sources of information? How do you filter things to create more value than you can currently get? That is what the semantic web could eventually promise to do. I wanted to reframe the way we use information, the way we work together. Now, 20 years on, I want to ask your help in a new reframing. I want you to put your data on the web. Okay, data is brown and boxy and boring and other, and that's how we think of it, isn't it, data? But in fact, data is about our lives. You just, you log on to your social networking site, you pick your favorite one, you say, this is my friend, bing, relationship, data. You say, this photograph, oh, it's about, it, it depicts this person, bing, that's data. Data, 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 Every The semantic web at its lowest level is just an expression of information, that's all it is. So the, how the web works today, for the most part, is human to human. A human being puts something in some format. The computer is all it knows about formatting information. It knows it's supposed to make this bold. It knows that it's supposed to underline this. Uh, the computer doesn't know anything more than it's just a bunch of bits. So semantics merely adds extra information to help you with the meaning of the information. It's really just like um, you know, transforming the web into something that's a little bit more like a database.
trying to make it a lot easier to, to find stuff be, because we have a, an understanding and an index of what's out there. So you have specific data items, whether they're books or songs or news articles or people, and linking them together. And with the semantic web technologies, the links mean something. So it's all about relationships. It's about relationships of one string to another string, or one number to another number. And if I have enough of those relationships, I start to build context, and context is what it's all about. If I said any kind of word, it's the context that surrounds the word that really gave you the meaning. What your brain has really done is connected that one word with all kinds of relationships. In a, in a technical sense, it's all the semantic web does is start to give all these relationships. If you look at the original uh, proposal for the web, there are different shapes for different things like people and documents and there are arrows going between them and the arrows are labeled. So this includes this, this describes this. So I think the idea of wanting to uh, capture the meaning of you know, the relationship to capture the actual, the actual data has been there for, eight, was there for ages. We know that there's a structure to this. There's, there's a structure to all the information on the internet. The reason there aren't too many criticisms of the semantic web yet is that it operates in its own bubble. I think I'm unusual in having six or eight years ago gone out with uh, a set of opinions that said this isn't working because it's not a good idea and it's never going to work. Semantic web is a word that um, began with a technical meaning. Now it's that word has morphed into a marketing term that's sort of abused and thrown around. And so I would almost argue to the extent that it's maybe not a useful word anymore. In terms of the semantic web, uh, the, you know, the idea is that everything is linked. I still like that idea. I think potentially that's a utopian idea to strive for. In an ideal world, if, if uh, yes, if, you know, if everybody was trained in database and knowledge representation technology, uh, that's, that's how we would do it. I've often joked that the semantic web is a witness protection program for AI researchers, right? That, that what the semantic web held at was the possibility that instead of making machines think like people, we can describe the world in terms that machines were good at thinking about. So we would switch from trying to build up brains in silicon and instead re-render the actual world as information. Uh, and that, that gets very quickly to one of the deepest you know, questions in all of Western philosophy, which is, does the world make sense? Or do we make sense of the world? I don't think you can unambiguously describe the world. I don't think you can describe the world or even large, large subdomains of the world in a way that all observers, or even most observers, will agree with. Unlike in the old days where we had a card catalog, and if you had a million ways of sorting through the card catalog, you just had a big mess, now we have computers, and we can do a million ways or a trillion ways of sorting through on demand. The notion that there is a single right way of categorizing that doesn't even occur to people, nor should it. I guess we're more on the skeptic and skeptics, and uh, although I wouldn't actually express it as a, as a skepticism, I, I would say that there are that we're enthusiasts for a particular piece of right, the right, semantic right. web, right. Um, which the which some people are skeptical about, <clears throat> which is the sort of sloppy or scruffy uh, semantic web. So the panel, the panel was a panel titled Does the Semantic Web Need Ontologies? And everybody on the panel said Yes, so we were all unanimous about that. The uh, semantic web does need ontologies. This only makes me think of the following question. Is the Pope a Catholic? So that sort of is at the far formal end of the semantic web. I guess what we both believe more in is it, you know, a little a little structure goes a long way if you combine it with, for example, 
a, you know, a human being that has a lot of intelligence between his or her ears. I was in the audience, but they had a microphone for the audience, and I sort of got up and said, I'm going to dissent. No. Uh, the, the semantic web does not need ontologies. I know that there are some people who feel very, like the panelists, who feel that very strongly that ontologies are a must. I think most of us in this room disagree with, um, with David, and I think we need to show him. <laughs> and and take them out to the playground and show them we can do much more. So when you, when you do parenting, there's only two people fighting unless the grandparents are at home, right? Okay. Uh, and they'll be fighting with you, but this is, you know, this is a whole community of, what was it, 500 odd, 600 people who are fighting all about a baby called the semantic web. Right. right. I mean, we could all just sort of sit back and do the work that we like to do and not care what everybody else is doing. But we're believers in the potential of this semantic web thing, that, that some wonderful things can, can come out of it. Um, and that makes us care uh, how it's pursued. What's funny thing about the web is it seeps in from the bottom. But for every person, they said, well, Tim, you know, what did you feel in 1993 when the web really exploded? Generally, that meant that was, it was when I found out about it. <laughs> Everybody, different people found out about the web at different times, or different people had their, their aha moment at different times. I think the web, the web, the World Wide Web, is a couple of different things. From a technology sense, it's some extraordinarily successful protocols and communication methods that mean that my web browser can go out to any web server in the world and ask for a web page and get it back and, and show it to me. From a more uh, social sense, the web is Facebook and MySpace and blogs and news sites and, right? and it's all the things we do on the web. And I think it's similar with Semantic Web. The first step is evolution, the second step is revolution. When, you know, once, once there's enough good content out there, we can make some systems that can reason on the, across the web and solve problems, answer complicated questions, uh, make amazing discoveries and linkages between things. Um, that'll be cool. That is off in the future. I have no idea what's going to happen, but in terms of the openness of the web and our ability to access it and uh, sort of the fundamental features of the internet that made it the internet. What happens to those features depends upon economics and politics and culture and technology. And it could easily change in radical ways through, um, through an invention that somebody in a garage in, is inventing now. It's a platform, just like the web. The idea of it is not that it should promote one particular sort of application. Uh, just as the internet didn't promote a particular application, uh, so I could design the web on it without asking anybody's permission. The same way, Semantic Web is sort of built on top of the web. It should just allow you to build whatever you like on top of it. What we, we can, at this conference, I think people can't imagine, because they're trying to make it work so much, they're not going to imagine what things people will be able to do with it once it's working and it's well deployed. Um. Do you think you can imagine? I mean, do you nope, know? I can't. No, if, if we end up building all the things I can imagine, we'll have failed.